Hi viewers, today at Handy Dandy Husband, we will take you through what happened to my 15 year old pair of Red Wing Safety work boots that feature the Super Soul 2.0. I will also show you how I obtained a free replacement pair of the boots. And last, I will show you what a resold pair of the same boots look like and provide a comparison on how the two soles feel on the exact same uppers. Here are my 15 year old USA made work boots, style 2426, 8 inch high with the Super Soul 2.0, steel toe, thin slate, waterproof, and with a fiberglass shank made by Red Wing. Note that this particular boot's current style number is 2416. Now, as you can tell from the boot label, it indicates that these boots were made in January 2004. So these boots are very old, 15 years old, in fact. But uh, you might not be able to see this. However, the treads on these boots have a significant uh, life left in them. Now, the reason for this is because they were mainly used during the mild winter that we experience here in Vancouver, BC. Despite the fact that they were rarely used, the soles underwent a sudden deterioration. As you can see, the both uh, the heels ripped off and the outer higher density polyurethane layer started to break off in chunks. This revealed the black greeny lower density urethane and the polyurethane lost its structural integrity and became very sticky. In fact, when the sudden deterioration of the soles occurred, I walked barely 50 meters and the heels and bits of the sole, exterior sole, started to break off in chunks. Now, before I go into what I did and how I dealt with Red Wing concerning this matter, I want to explore and provide an overview to you all about how Red Wings builds these particular shoes. And it's important to note that uh, these boots are made slightly differently than their traditional welt construction boots. Now I've placed on the screen a diagram of the type of construction that my particular uh, boot has and basically uh, you start off with the upper and that is the black leather that you see and after the upper there is the brown insole layer and this insole layer is what the footbed would normally sit on and then your foot would go on to that footbed or the footbed can be interchangeably known as the inner sole. Underneath the insole is the ply rib and this is stitched to the upper. Beneath the ply rib is a plastic welt uh, with special underside fibers and this is side stitched to the ply rib. So the welt, ply rib, insole and upper are all one uh, cohesive unit. Then something interesting happens. Red Wing takes this cohesive unit and then it places it in a mold. First, it lays down a high density clear urethane and this becomes the outer sole. And then into this outer sole, they pour a lower density, the black lower density urethane. The whole uh, contraption, which is the top portion and the bottom portion, are then fitted into the mold and allowed to set. And the urethane, without any adhesive, affixes itself to the upper. Now that's the sole to welt fusion, and it makes for a very solid boot where the outer sole 
is chemically fused to the upper assembly. This is different from a traditional welt construction. And as you can see with a traditional welt construction that Red Wing creates, you have the same upper, leather, black, then you have the insole. The ply rib is stitched to the insole. And then a rubber welt is stitched onto the ply rib. Cork fills this welt. And then a doubler is both glued and stitched to the welt. So you have three levels of stitching. After that, the doubler is glued to an outer sole. Now, that's the way Red Wing makes uh, their traditional welt construction, but other manufacturers actually tie in the um, outer sole to the doubler with stitching. Now I'm going to describe what exactly happened with these boots and how I complained to Red Wing. I wrote to Red Wing and I've placed my email on the screen so that people know that I actually did write to them and this is not a hoax or a scam of any sort. And I wrote to their customer service at redwingshoes.com and I explained to them that uh, I've had these shoes for a number of years. They're well beyond your 12 month warranty and I've only used them for winter weather. And when I wore them this last winter, almost immediately after I began walking in them, the soles seemed unusually sticky. And when I continued to walk, bits of the translucent shell of the sole tread began to break off in pieces. And I explained to them that I've been a loyal uh, Red Wing customer and I expected these um, sh shoes to serve me for a lot longer than they did and I did not expect them to break so suddenly. I hypothesized that the material that the outer sole tread was either defective or made out of a substance not ideal for a sole. And I asked for their assistance to address this issue. Red Wing responded back promptly to my email and while they did provide me with uh, information on what had happened, it was not as helpful as I had liked it to be. They explained that the polyurethane was an organic substance and that while it did create long-lasting, uh, lightweight, uh, comfortable, cushiony shoes, it was still susceptible to a process known as hydrolysis if the soles were not properly used, meaning if the polymolecules sat for extended periods of time, they became weaker and thus led to problems such as sole disintegration. So they compared it to buying tires and letting them sit. Eventually they would start cracking and or letting a car sit for too long and then the engine would eventually fall apart and break. They recommended that I have the soles resold. Now, I realize that my boots are 15 years old. However, nowhere in the literature when I was purchasing these boots did anyone tell me that they, I had to wear them regularly or every month or every week or every couple of months. And frankly, to me, that sounded a little bit absurd that a shoe would have a best before date on it. And uh, it seems even worse that if you don't use it, say in the summer months, um, it would start to deteriorate faster. And that seems really odd to me considering it's a work boot that's insulated and you would normally only wear it in the winter when you needed it to be warmer. So I went to the web page and I did come across the replacement shoe. As you can see, it's the Min Supersole 2.0 8 inch boot. I was pretty surprised to see that even three years ago, there was somebody complaining about the horrible soles on these boots. I think the real important element of this comment is when he says, I can walk through six to seven inches of standing water inside retaining walls 
and my feet stay bone dry while the other guys have to remove their boots and put on galoshes. Well, I think that's the key to the issue there for this gentleman, and that is hydrolysis is a condition that ex is exacerbated with water or nearness to water. And because he was perhaps walking uh, underwater with the boots, that hydrol the process of hydrolysis was that much faster on his soles. And another comment uh, from a farm, from a farmer, it appears, uh, he's called himself Farm Boy anyways, he purchased them in 2015, and he turned one boot over and noticed the sole was literally falling apart. The treads are falling off in chunks, while the deeper portions of the sole seem to be porous eroding. And he talks about having boots with Vibram soles that are close to 10 years old with no problems. And he says, apart from the sole problem, these boots are extremely comfortable. So it appears that other people besides myself have experienced the same issue, uh, albeit they experienced this issue many years sooner than I did. I experienced it 15 years after I had purchased them. So I ended up writing back to Red Wing and I explained to them that this process is completely new to me. Uh, no time did anyone tell me that uh, this these boots were special and how I had to wear them or how I had to treat them. And I would have treated them that way had I known about it. Um, and um, after I had purchased the boots, there was nothing in the literature, in the box or on the sides to indicate anything. And I thought that it was absurd that they were using... Uh, you know, a tire analogy or a uh, automobile engine analogy. And finally, I said that I've been a great ambassador of your product and that quite embarrassing to go to work and have my souls disintegrate uh, in front of the people that I had praised your product to. So I asked them to readdress the matter. Finally, after some time, the uh, customer service agent did speak to their manager and they advised that they would provide me with a replacement pair of boots or resold my current pair uh, at their cost. I chose to ask them to provide me with a new pair of boots. Uh, I'll just show you the purchase order or the packaging slip that came with the pair of shoes that I received. Here are the new boots that I received from Red Wing. Just going to give you quick overview of the boots and I'll take a picture of this as well. These are the model 2416 and just in the corner here you can see that they were made in February of 2019 and they have the Super Soul 2.0 and you can tell the the treads on these shoes are not very aggressive you can tell here that the welt is plastic and it is not sewn into the outer sole. When I press this, you can see that there is give. And that's what gives these shoes a very comfortable feel as you're walking and using them throughout the day. Apart from that, the only other difference between these boots and my 15 year old boots is the fact that this label is no longer fabric like it used to be. And the laces are slightly thinner than what my original boots were. But apart from those two differences, the boots are exactly the same. There is some, I guess, a deficiency or just a manufacturing deficiency here where the welt doesn't smoothly um, interface with the uh, other side of the welt. As opposed to on this side, it's quite even and there's no ridge to that welt. It's all smooth on this side as well. So I'm very happy that I received uh, a new pair of work boots from Red Wing. And I'm even happier to see that Red Wing has maintained its quality standards for more than a decade. 
These are basically the exact same boots that I would have bought in 2004. I did try them on and they are more snug than my existing uh, used pair. However, uh, with proper breaking in, um, they um, will, I believe, feel the same. Now, I just want to show you the, ins the inner sole. This is the same Comfort Force inner sole that came with the original boot as well. And inside, you can see, you can see that the Gore-Tex lining covers the entire boot. Now the reason why I show this to you is uh, I'm going to compare this to my original boot and what I did to my original boot later on. But overall this is an excellent showing by Red Wing and I must say I'm very impressed with their customer service. It did take some prodding for them to provide me with this warranty replacement and in all frankness after 15 years I'm not sure any other company would have uh, stepped up to the plate the way Red Wing did. Now as everyone knows uh, here on my channel we encourage everyone to reuse, reduce and uh, we want to reduce the pollution in our environment. So what I ended up doing was I, though I had a new pair of Red Wing boots, I had the, my old pair, the one that had uh, experienced the hydrolysis, I had that um, resold at my expense. I mean it was expensive and it cost $150 to get the Vibram soles. But as you can tell, the lugs or the tread is quite a bit more aggressive and it doesn't have the same give as a Super Soul 2.0. Another thing that uh, I had done was that I had the plastic welt, as you can see here, I had the cobbler sew the plastic welt into the midsole and he sewed all the way around to make it very secure. The other thing I had the cobbler do, and I'll take out the inner sole for this, turn the light back on, is if you can see here, I had the cobbler sew the inside of the insole to the midsole as well and that provided an extremely stable boot surface. Now I find that uh, this was perhaps overkill however um, I find that uh, with the thicker um, Vibram sole and with the material that is perhaps not as uh, giving or not as flexible as a super sole, I wanted to be certain that there was no problems with uh, the outer sole coming apart from the upper. And this was an excellent way of me uh, making sure that this particular boot lasted many more years uh, than the super sole will, which I anticipate will require replacement uh, within. Um, 15 years again. Now here is the footbed or inner sole and I, like I said it's very similar to what the current one that Red Wing uses. Of course this one is old now but uh, still useful and a couple of things that I can mention. This is the same boot and this is a 2426 and again January 2004. As I had mentioned earlier the laces are thicker than uh, the current boot and this label here is fabric. 
Another thing that the cobbler did for me, and I hope that the camera is able to pick this up, is that instead of just attaching the Vibram sole flat onto the midsole, he put in a heel riser because he wanted the shoe to sit more flat. Otherwise, he said that there would be more of a tipping tendency to the shoe. The shoes themselves are extremely stable and they are higher than the Super Soul 2.0. I'm just going to slowly show you the layer. So this is the upper. This is the plastic welt. This is the midsole. This is the riser. And this is the outer sole. The cobbler polished them up for me so they look a lot better than they did when they went into him. One thing I noticed when I took the super soles out of the box was this tendency for the super sole to lose its, I guess, straightness or its ability to, uh, to remain level. So it's only with one, one of the pair. This one's a lot more stable, but I think this one was perhaps when it was shipped, shipping like this, and then it warped up a little. I'm pretty sure after wearing it for some time, it will no longer have that warp into in it. But uh, just thought that was that was an interesting little quirk that I noticed between the two. Now I'm gonna compare the wobbliness of the Super Soul with the boots that I had resold. Okay, here are the super soles. And this one's solid. This one's a little bit wobbly. And here are the resold used boots. And the Vibram soles are very strong, very rigid, and they don't deform very easily. In terms of height, you can tell The Vibram shoals are thicker. Probably by about a quarter of an inch, maybe more. And as a result, they do sit higher. And in frankness, they do look better from the sides, as well as from the top with the stitching in the welt. I think the stitching gives it a very uh, nice uh, texture, rather than the the plainness of the plastic welt. Finally, I did wear one of the new boots and one of the old boots together. And in my opinion, I preferred my used pair of boots with the Vibram soles. And the reason why is because the super soles while they did have a lot of give and they were cushiony, um, they tended to not prov inspire a lot of confidence when I was walking. And um, I, I walked taller with these ones and I felt more sure-footed with the Vibram soles. 
but with the super soles it's almost like the energy that I was using to walk was sort of being dissipated by the cushion of these soles. Now that's just my preference and perhaps what I felt um, and I am pretty sure for somebody who's wearing this day in and day out it would probably be an excellent pair of boots for them to be wearing and that cushion would be very forgiving on their ankles and knees and even the cobbler noted that contractors and and uh, concrete workmen love these boots because it saves their knees and their ankles but for me who's only going to be using it in the winter I like the height I like the stability I like the more aggressive lugs of the Vibram sole now I just want everyone to remember that my boots were 15 years old well past the 12 month warranty period and I would say that my old boots provided excellent service to me I'm very grateful to Red Wing for having replaced the shoes after hearing of my intention to irregularly wear the shoes for a lifetime I am happy with how Red Wing chose to handle this matter I think Red Wing should tell its customers about the fact that polyurethane soles are designed to be used regularly. And if somebody wants a pair of boots that they wear only seasonally, uh, a rubber sole would be the better choice. As a side note, I just want to show everyone the box that the new Red Wing shoes came in. Note that they have some wording about the legendary brand on one side of the box and on the other side of the box they have easy step proper care instructions it says here a few minutes of proper care to prolong their daily comfort and long-term life always clean off excess dirt from your footwear to prevent wear and drying Waterproof leather, clean with warm water and a stiff bristle brush. Proper conditioning will help preserve life of your footwear. Add extra protection to preserve your footwear investment with Red Wing Leather Protector. But nowhere here does it say that you should wear them regularly and not seasonally. And there were no instructions or anything of that sort in the box to indicate or tell anyone that that is how these boots are supposed to be worn. And I think that's a failing, uh, frankly speaking. I know that Red Wing is a venerated brand. Uh, I love them and I'm still a, good, a great ambassador for them. However, I think that to be frank and forthright, it would be important to place a note in the um, box or attached to the shoes indicating that they're in they should be worn regularly or they may be susceptible to hydrolysis uh, now albeit it after 15 years still it uh, should be something that the consumer can make a decision about i hope that this will help other people out when they experience similar problems with their soles for their red wings or with their soles uh, that also use polyurethane. Now I will be doing a deeper dive into this uh, issue of hydrolysis and stay tuned to my channel and uh, I'll be coming out with that video shortly. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. We welcome you to join us in our journey to save money and the environment by subscribing. If you have any questions or comments please leave them below. 